how did you how did you come to be in the Ramones? What how did it happen? It's uh, being in the right spot at the right time. You know, I was at a rehearsal with another band, and I knew the roadie, and he came in in Brooklyn and said, I said, oh, what are you doing, man? Well, the Ramones are auditioning drummers. And I said, oh, man, maybe I should go down there. So I went down there, and it worked out. That's kind of how it happened, you know? How do you, uh, Richie, how do you describe that experience? You were with the Ramones for five years, right. uh, touring with them, I mean, constantly, the, as you said, mm -hmm. you're selling the places out. There was an, right. It must have been pretty intense. How do you describe the experience, that sort of day-to-day -day experience of being in the Ramones? Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we did play a lot of dates. I think one year we played about 180 dates. That's a lot of dates uh, to play. And we travel up and down that East Coast a lot in a van and all the way from Vermont to, you know, it was crazy. But, you know, as far as being in the band, it definitely was a different experience. There were a lot of things uh, that you didn't do that you did in a normal band. Like, I remember, like, the third show, we started a song, you know, we kind of, one, two, three, we started the song, played a little, everybody's lost, we just stop. <laughs> just stop there. All right, stop. All right, let's try it again and go again. Now, I've never had that in a band. Normally, you'd, like, fake it through and yeah, keep yeah, going yeah. and catch up. Nah, we would stop and go again. You know, it was really funny. It was a, a time where uh, no one really liked what they were doing. I mean, the band, it'd be, oh, we got to go do this again. Oh, mm. play for these dirty kids. And, mm. you know, and you had that kind of, you know, I guess you had that kind of, oh, man, and, uh, go out there. And then once you got out there, it was a total professional band. We did the gig. We never looked at each other. You'll never find a shot of one member looking at anybody else. Like, wow. you know, when people look at each other, you know, we believe to look forward. That's the audience. We don't even look at each other and go, hey, we're jamming. <laughs> no, you looked forward. That was it. And you just went along. And so those are all unique experiences. And, you know, the leather jacket and how we came across and taking the surname, the Ramones. Come on, it was unique, you know. I mean, uh, you know. Was it all very enjoyable? No. I mean, you know, we, it was a bunch of crazy guys, you know. Mm. I mean, it was difficult at times. Well, you know, and they were known for being a pretty dysfunctional group. I mean, what was the personality? That must have been an odd kind of experience, too. Yes, all different personalities. Yeah. Like, you know, you had Johnny Ramone, who I really didn't talk to much. You know, after a show, we'd always have to go to the 7-Eleven. <laughs> In the big bus with like a thousand kids chasing us in cars, he'd have to go to 7 Eleven and get milk and cookies, and then he would go to his room. So you never saw him at night. He was kind of that guy. You had Joey and Dee Dee. Uh, Joey, I hung out with a little more. You could actually talk to him. Mm -hmm. Dee Dee, you would like uh, try to hide from him if somebody gave him some substance at a thing. He, he'd like to like follow you around all night and knock on your door. So it was like, it was a lot of interesting things, you know. And over those five years, people changed, you know. Mm. Some drinking stopped and drugs stopped. And, you know, it was, it was kind of interesting. I caught them at a different time. And, um, you know, it, it turned out great. And sadly, none of them are around anymore. I, so. read, I read somewhere that you, um, that you were a, a really... A, a, um, influential in terms of working with Joey that you sort of drew him out of his shell in some ways. I read somewhere that you took him bowling in Brooklyn or something well, like that. Yeah, yeah, that was another thing. Here's the kid from New Jersey going to hang out with Joey Ramone who lived in the East Village, never went out of his house. Yeah. You know, he couldn't, you know, people would bother him. So I kind of introduced him to like, I don't know if you call them normal things, but I was a Jersey boy, me and Bon Jovi, you know, we have that kind of thing. So. We would go out. Uh, I went to Brooklyn, took him to the bowling alley. I taught him how to play poker on the tour bus. You know, I was really taking him for a lot of money. He didn't know how to play well until the road manager stopped me and said, Joey's into six weeks out per diem. And you have to stop this <laughs> poker playing. So we had to stop that. But, uh, and also, one of my favorite stories is, you know, I don't know why we always stayed at Holiday Inn. So I don't know, was that the hotel in the mid-80s? I don't know, but maybe we got a good rate. Yeah. It was at the Holiday Inn. And I, 
we went swimming. You know, they never went in the Holiday Inn pool. I'll never forget this. I took Joey swimming. And it's the first time I ever saw him with his head wet. You know, he, he had all that hair. And then when his, when his hair got wet, he had a head about this big. <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> it was really funny, you know. And he'd have those, you know, those rim-colored glasses yeah. and rose-colored glasses. And so he, and he kind of enjoyed that, trying to do normal things. I mean, Joey was bigger than me. He was about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he had that look about him that people always thought, oh, this guy's on drugs. It wasn't true at all, you know? It was just, you know, it was what it was. And people really didn't understand him, you know? And he dealt with that all his life growing up, kind of lanky and stuff, but wonderful guy, real nice guy, you know? But you wouldn't know that looking at him. You go, oh, God, this guy, you know? Mm -hmm. He's something else. But one more funny story, when we were in New Jersey coming home from a show, you know, the officers always loved the Ramones, you know, but we got pulled over coming down on a highway and they made us all get out of the van and empty our pockets. So we're, we're all, uh, it was winter time, so Joey had this big parker on. And Joey's always like had collected things. He, he was very messy. Yeah. So he starts emptying his pockets and you know, I put a few things on the hood, the other guys. He took the whole hood up. As he went into these deep pockets, a half a bagel would come out. <laughs> you know, like uh, he took uh, Dramamine or something for nasal congestions, makeup on things. The whole hood of the car was filled with his stuff. It was so funny. And, th and they let us go. But all those kind of stories are really interesting with that. That You know, I always remember those things, you know. So... How do, you, how do you describe uh, the influence you think you had on the, on the music of the Ramones? I mean, one thing, you, you really drove the speed of those right. songs. That was probably the biggest thing, you know. Um, I came in and we started to get yelled at. We were doing like 36 songs in less than an hour. You yeah. know, we were, we were supposed to play an hour and then do an encore. And, you know, it got to a point where it was getting so fast. But you got to remember at that time, that movement was coming in 83 of that speed rock, you know, yeah. there were a bunch of bands doing that. So we just started driving it more and more and I just get there and go as fast as you can and make it happen and it kind of took off. The kids really liked it, they liked the speed, like the speed was like twice as fast as the record. You know, I mean, Joy B, rock, 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 reach, rock, 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 reach, you know, it's like, but that was it. And I think it's more exciting, fast live. I hate when bands, play a song the same speed as it is on the radio. Hmm. It sounds like it's going slow. I don't know, you know? When it's played a little faster live, there's more energy to it. But yeah, you know, punk rock drum is more simpler and laid back. I came in with a more heavy hand for that band and, you know, and also brought in writing, songwriting, and sang with them. So that was all new experience too for them. Well, and um, minor chords. Apparently Johnny uh -huh. had freaked out that you had introduced a right. minor we're, seventh into a song. We, yeah, we had fights like that. Yeah, minor seventh, you know. And I said, you know, you got to play this chord. He said, oh, what is it? I don't want to do that. I said, it adds suspense. Yeah. It needs suspense. I'll go, do, 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 woo, you know. Yeah. Like, and, you know, we'd get into that. Or there with the Ramones, you couldn't play any syncopation for five years. <laughs> if I would go a triplet, Johnny would be lost, completely lost. Just a boo, oh, I'm lost, you know? And so that was just pound. And maybe that's why I took it faster and faster. At least it was something else I can do. Yeah. Really burn it and hit it hard because like as Jazz, you were saying, you couldn't do any syncopation or anything like that. I've had one or two songs that I wrote that start off with drums. You couldn't play them. We'd have to just count one, two, three, four and start from when everybody came in. <laughs> so, you know, that's how that was.